Welcome back guys. Today we're going to build a real forged carbon shift knob and I'm going to show you the entire process. Let's get straight into it. Before getting to the design part I had to take a couple measurements. I took off my ARC style shift knob and got the rule and calipers out. The lever measured a full 6 cm from top of the thread down to the shifter boot of which 2 cm were threaded. I needed that because I want to bring the shift knob much closer to the boot without having to chop and weld the lever. I then measured the bottom of the lever which was 14 mils, and then the threaded part which was a M10 but knowing Nissan's I quickly got my thread pitch gauge out as well. Regular M10 thread pitch is 1.5 but since this is a skyline my suspicion was correct. It's 1.25. I was considering showing you the entire design process in Fusion 360, but that would have resulted in a very long video. Nobody got time for that. Instead, I'll give you a quick rundown. I also uploaded the STL files to Thingiverse in case you want to print out the mold yourself. The link's in the description. I took most dimensions from the Nismo Duracon shift knob because I used to have one in my old R32 GTR, and I absolutely loved it. The outside shape will be the same and the bottom will have a 50mm wide and 60mm deep hole which will be added by integrating a metal rod into the mold. I gave the top piece a very slight draft angle but I believe it wasn't necessary or even that useful. For this project I'll be following mostly the easy composites instructions and I'm also using some of their products. Not their chopped carbon however, because I find theirs are a bit too frayed and fuzzy. Either way, I exported all the parts with the mold into my slicer and gone with my usual settings. I recommend 0.2mm layer height with a regular nozzle. 4 wall lines, 80% infill, and obviously temperature and speed settings based on your printer for printing PTG. As soon as all parts were printed, I started to remove the brims and supports, as well as drill out the holes cleanly and sand the surface. The usual. It turned out that the prints without any clearance in between them were too tight of a fit, so I went ahead and printed a second top part with 0.5mm clearance. That fit in almost too easy. The next time I'll be reducing the clearance again a tiny bit. The model I uploaded has already all improvements built in by the way. I proceeded to disassemble for final prep. But just to show you once more, it was a very nice fit up and surfaces aligned perfectly inside. When I was happy with all parts I picked up my go to wax and PVA combo, as well as my filleting wax and started applying it. I first started applying the filleting wax to all bolts so removal would be easier down the road. And then coated the mold pieces with the usual wipe on wax. I made sure to cover everything inside out, because the PVA I followed up with was going to be all around as well, so all epoxy spills would be easily removable in the end.
I even gave it a 15mm rod APVA coat so it would come out easy when the part was done. As soon as the first round of PVA was dry, I started assembly again, being careful not to scratch the PVA coat. After assembling I gave it another PVA coat to make sure the outside was covered as well, and to negate all the layer lines from the print even further. Same goes for the top piece. So here's where you have to be very accurate to get good results. In order to get the right carbon to resin ratio, for forged carbon you're gonna have to do some calculations. Forged carbon is supposed to have a density of 1.4 at a 60 to 40% carbon to resin ratio, meaning first we have to figure out the volume of the piece we are going to make. In Fusion 360 that is super easy. Simply open the properties tab on a model of the piece you want to make. In our case that will be 55 cc's. If you multiply those 55 with a density of 1.4 we get about 77 grams for the finished piece. Those 77 grams will be 60% carbon and 40% resin. 60% carbon in our case will be around 46 grams. It looks like a lot but don't worry, it'll compress nicely when wetted out. 40% of resin equals to about 31 grams. Easy Composites recommends going for around 75% for having enough access to be squeezed out. I simply doubled the 40% value for ease of remembering. Took me quite some time to get all carbon wetted out and consolidated inside the mold house. After about 15 minutes the carp was empty and I pushed away the carbon from the sides where the mold would close and then I popped on the top half. At that point I was thinking no way that's gonna close. I got me some more wood and clamps though and started going at it. I was clamping it tighter and tighter over a period of another 15 minutes probably. I didn't dare to unpack it the next day yet, so I gave it a full two days to cure. It really didn't want to come apart, but then I remembered I added those chamfers for a reason.
The sides were off, but the top didn't want to budge. Sadly, I had to sacrifice it, but that's not too big of a deal, as it was the part that required the least amount of material. The rot came out super easy. I was worried about that initially, but I was left with a great part from the molding process, and I started to deburr and sand it, roughly. Next up was a proper sand with 120, 240 and 400 grit. Back at home I stuck the knob into my drill press because I don't own a lathe, but it worked like a charm. Due to some small holes and gaps, I decided to give it a coating with XCR coating resin. It's a great product and it's perfect for these kind of jobs. With the resin cured, I had to get rid of the drip and the uneven bottom surface. I sanded those up by hand and then it has gone back to the drill press for its final sand before clear coating. It started looking real nice after it had been completely flattened. I suppose you could use it draw like that, but I opted for AM as clear instead. I mixed up a small amount and gave it two coats. It came out amazing. It looks incredible in different light conditions. I put it on the scale to see how we got on with our target of 77 grams, and it was just 3 grams off, which sounds about right considering the amount I have sanded off. Since I couldn't find threaded inserts that I liked and could get to me in a timely manner, I just quickly made one up myself. I got a 14mm rod with a 9mm hole and tapped it with the same M10 1.25 thread size as on my gear lever.
I welded up the end so the glue I was about to put it in with wouldn't reach the threads. A quick run over with the belt sander had it prepped and ready to go in. I put it on the car to harden after wrapping around the gear lever some tape so it would be a snug fit and the thread inside would settle as straight as possible. Two days later when the glue hardened I took it off to remove the tape as well as to get some beauty shots and I must say I'm more than happy with how it came out. It looks and feels amazing. Great shape and no more too cold or too hot metal knob. It really has the same temperature and neutrality as Duracon, if not better. And then it went straight back into the car. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time. Bye.